Hello ladies and gentlemen, Blender 2.91 is finally here. Yes, you can head on over to blender.org and download it now, assuming that their servers haven't melted down like they often do on release date. So today we're going to take a look at some of the coolest new features in Blender 2.91. And if you tuned into my preview, yeah, we're gonna cover a lot of the same things. So if you want to jump straight forward to when I go through the release notes, timestamp will be available down below. Now, when I did that hands-on preview, a lot of people were asking about the title graphic, and that is the new splash for Blender 2.91, and you can see the artist's work in front of us right now. This is Robin Tran's work. He works at Ubisoft Massive. Uh, this was all created in Blender. Just amazing work. I, I definitely uh, love it. Also used in the title screen today. So if you're wondering where that came from, that is Robin Tran. Well, without further ado, let us jump in and take a look at Blender 2.91 in action. Now, the first thing we're going to look at is the new cloth sculpting. Now, sculpting has gotten a lot of love in Blender recently. And as you can see, this one is absolutely perfect for things like shirts, uh, fabrics, and so on. So you've got this new uh, sculpt brush down here. So the cloth one here. And then later on, we're going to look at this other one here, the cloth filter. Uh, and first, we'll start with cloth. And cloth has gotten a lot of capabilities lately. You're going to see there's a number of different deformations here. For example, I can drag. We'll come in here. You can see here you can easily add... Uh, wrinkles into your cloth shape makes it really really simple but we've got a number of different options here as well so we could also do things like uh, pinch into a certain area so there you see we're setting tight creases in our object uh, we've got other objects like inflate grab snake hook and so on so you can easily work with cloth materials I'm going to undo all those changes I just made, but if you want to go in and add simple uh, creases or crevices or ruffles or whatever to your shirts or uh, fabrics, you can easily do that now. We've also got options here for auto smoothing, um, but you'll also notice if we look here, there's also this ability to enable collisions. And if I look inside of this mesh, so let's go here to wireframe, you're going to notice I have this simple polygon mesh inside of it uh, with some collisions set up on it. So now what I'm going to do is switch on over here and we'll showcase some of this in action. So I've got use collisions turned on. This is the new cloth filter. And what I could do with this guy is a number of different options, like an inflate, pinch, scale, and so on. But what I'm gonna showcase here is gravity. So now I can just basically start applying this and watch, we're gonna see gravity simulation applied. And you'll notice down here, we're, we're starting to hit that cylinder inside and interact with it. And I'll just keep going. There we go, we're, we're, we're uh, hitting that again. And then we keep moving down, and there you see we're really coming into it, and it's really having an effect on our shape. By the way, we can go in the opposite direction too, if we so wish. But let's continue our simulation to the extreme. We're gonna keep draping down until our cloth actually tears. And look at that, that is just awesome. So that is the new cloth brush uh, with um, the collision stuff built into it. You've got a ton of controls over it. Uh, there was a ton of changes in cloth in general and in sculpting in general. We'll get to that in the readme in just a second. For our next magic trick, we're gonna showcase the new Booleans. And for that, we need the default cube here. So we've got a default cube here. I'm just gonna go ahead, I'll do a shift duplicate, grab that guy. So shift duplicate, grab, move him over just a little bit like so. There you go. So now we have two of them. And what we're going to look at now is a new modifier. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna to go to the Boolean modifier. Now you may be saying to yourself, all right, this isn't new. Well, you're right. But what is new is exact. And one of those things is with Blender 2.8X, uh, you could say that the, the Boolean stuff took a bit of a regression, but now we've got this new exact solver in here, and this is much slower, but what it will do is give you a much more precise result. So here we go, we're doing um, a, a subtraction between the two, and there you immediately see Booleans in action. Some exciting stuff there. Now we've just done uh, a pair of cubes, and again, you've got a choice. You can go back to the, the traditional BMesh solver and solve it using fast, like so, but with the exact, you're going to get more exacting results, but slower. So if you're carving a bunch of uh, stuff out and you want precision, you're going to use the exact solver. But what's even cooler here is you'll notice right here, operand type of objects. So we don't need to just have objects. So I'm gonna go ahead, we'll get rid of the second cube, and now we'll go ahead and create, um, come up here, create a new collection, like so. And inside of that collection, let's add a sphere, all right, UV sphere, move that guy over there and just create a couple of them. All right, so we got this compound shape here in our collection. So I'm gonna grab that guy, let's 
grab all that guy, we'll move that over there. So now what I can do is I can go back to our default cube and I can switch this operand type out instead to collection. And now for collection type, let's pick our new collection, this collection of spheres and let's hide it. And there you see, you can now carve uh, multiple objects out of a single object using collections at this point in time. Definitely a nice improvement there. So the Booleans have definitely improved in Blender 2.91. Now we're going to check out a cool new volumetric feature. Now we've had open VDB support has been added to Blender in the last couple of versions, but now we've got the ability to create a volume directly inside of Blender. What we're going to do is get rid of the default cube. Bye bye default cube. All right, so now what we're going to do is create a slightly more complicated mesh. For this, we need Susan. All right, there we go. We have a Susan in our scene available up here. Now we're going to go back here to add, and we're going to add a volume of type empty. And now what we can do is populate that volume using a mesh. With the volume selected, we go down to the modifiers over here, uh, add modifier, and you're going to see you have a mesh to volume. And now what we can do is just go ahead and select Susan. All right, there we go. So now I could hide, um, hide Susan completely, and you're going to see the immediate effects there. Now you can choose to control how densely populated, so basically the number of particles to create within that volume. You can also create the voxel amount. I'm not 100% certain what that is actually doing, um, but you can basically create these cool volume effects. So if you've got something like a smoke effect, like any basically any translucent gas you want to create, uh, volume support is a really good option for that. And the cool thing here is I come back to Susan, let's make her visible again, and we'll go here into edit mode, like so, and grab a couple of things you'll notice our volume mesh changes as well. So you could easily keyframe your other mesh to do, uh, you know, like a snaking particle effect, or you could even do like a, a gas effect keyframe face out of the steam or whatever. And your underlying mesh, as you change it, will affect the volume on top. Now there's other options in terms of uh, controlling how the volume of gas works. And that is specifically, let's go back to our volume here, back to modifiers, we can add another modifier, and that is the volume displace modifier. And this will use basically a display Displacement map to uh, control this. So we'll come down here, we'll go down to the texture maps. Uh, we can create a new one here. So let's go new and we'll create it of type, sure, clouds. So there is our effect, there is the result. So let's go back over here. You can see we can control the strength of that displacement like so. So you can use these displacement maps to control how your volumes work. By the way, this entire volume has its own shader attached to it. So if we go over here to the shader editor like so, uh, material. Oh, got to create a material for it. All right, here you see, uh, we got this principal volume attached to it. So if I switch over here into render mode, uh, you'll see it just kind of grayed out. What I could do, for example, is add a color to our volume. If we want to have an emissive color coming out of that, we can do so. We can have it uh, give off light and give it a little bit. Ooh, that's a little lot too much strength. So you can see you can have it emit out. Now, I think we have some rendering issues here. Uh, so I'm going to actually turn emission back off, but you get an idea of what it's about. So you've got your own principled volume shader there for controlling how your volume will actually look. And of course, you can manipulate controlling the underlying mesh and using this displacement shader uh, modifier available down here, the volume displace shader there. Uh, so definitely a cool new feature there. This next one is another really cool trick. I showed it in my preview as well, and we're gonna go ahead and check out new grease pencil functionality. So once again, sorry, sacrificial cube, you are out of here. Instead, what we wanna do is go on down here and grab a black and white image, and then let's go on back to Blender like so. Here we are, and just drop that in the scene. So there we've got this image in the scene. We could, we could line it up, put it wherever we want. Of course, we could just drop that guy at the origin with no rotation at all. There we go. So we got nicely set up in the scene, like so. Now what we can do with this image selected, we could come with the image selected. We go in here to object, and now you've got this ability, trace image to grease pencil. And what it's going to do is take a black and white image and basically create a grease pencil object out of it. That is just awesome. I, I, I'm actually struggling a bit to come up with all of the various different scenarios I can use this for, uh, but you could quickly grease pencilize just about anything this way. And again, you can come in once you've got it there, uh, you can actually go ahead and modify it. It is a completely editable object 
Uh, so it's a way to quickly populate grease pencil from a black and white image. That is definitely a cool thing. And of course, we could turn this into a mesh. You could quickly create, um, and, you know, I could extrude out from this and we could quickly turn uh, black and white images into 3D objects in our world. But uh, I, I'm sure some artists out there are going to come up with some incredible ideas for this one, but it's just simplicity itself. Literally, you drop an image in, turn it into a grease pencil, and you are done. And, and that is just, that is really cool. So anyways, that is it. And now it is time to download Blender and go through the release notes. Blender is up. You can see here the download button is here. Good luck getting it. Their servers are not the fastest right now. So hopefully you succeeded in grabbing it. But now we're going to go through the release notes. And one thing you're going to notice with Blender 2.91 is they have really upped the aesthetic quality of these release notes. So you can see here, uh, we're going to get first off back to what we already showcased earlier on. Uh, cloth collisions in action. You can see an example of it right here. But that was not the only improvements to sculpt in general. Uh, we've got speed up your workflow with quick gestures. You can draw a line to trim, create masks, create face sets, use cursor depth to the origin, uh, combined with box and lasso gestures. Uh, new sculpt trim tools let you cut and even add geometry using box or lasso gestures. You can nicely see it in action right here. So whoop, there goes his head and off it goes. So sculpting really got a lot of love. You've got the posing in cloth. We saw that in action with the gravity uh, earlier on. And another cool thing here with sculpting is the new boundary brush. This allows you to actually select the edges that you're sculpting. So you see right there. So you can quickly define the boundary of the entire shape that you're sculpting with. This is actually something that was traditionally difficult with edit and mesh. And it's kind of funny because in some ways I kind of look at with all the sculpting functionality, they're kind of envisioning that you will do all of your modeling in sculpting and it could be in the future that that is where we're going. And here you can see all kinds of other features and functions in terms of sculpting goodness. Not going to go through all of it. We covered the major ones for sure. If you want to drill down and see all the changes, I will, of course, link this in the linked article down below. Uh, we already talked about this one. Booleans. Booleans are updated. We've got a much better Boolean uh, exact solver for more complex geometry. Also for the ability to uh, collide with... Um, uh, geometry groups or collections, which is definitely nice. Of course, this is going to slow down. I, I don't get this kind of performance on my own machine personally, but a new Boolean is definitely a likable thing because this is one of the few areas where Blender 2.8 was worse than Blender 2.79. Uh, we've also got custom curve bevels, so you can curve um, curve objects and text objects now have support for custom bevel profiles, just like with the bevel modifiers. All bevel types now support flat curve caps too, so if you're beveling out a uh, tube or something to that effect, you can have a cap on at the end. We saw this, the volume mesh stuff, uh, definitely a cool new feature that you can see kind of a more advanced behind the scenes mesh than just Susan. So you can give an idea what kind of you could create uh, really complex smoke and fire effects using that new functionality. And as we saw, you can create um, a mesh from the volume. You can actually go the other way uh, to volume to mesh. Um, we saw this as well, just basically boom, drop in an image, create it out of grease pencil. That is pretty awesome. New holdout options and materials allows you to paint holes in strokes and filled areas, uh, plus a number of other grease pencil improvements there as well. Again, I really love the fact that their uh, release notes are, are this sexy now too as well. Oh yeah, this is another one. I should have probably showcased this in the video because this is actually really cool. You can now do property searches over here, a control F to start searching and an alt F to clear out the searches. So if you're searching for a specific field in uh, the inspector, the property window, you can now search. Very cool new feature there as well. And uh, if you're a crap typer, well, there's also fuzzy search in there, so it can make up for uh, your awful typing abilities. Uh, we got complex rigid bodies as well. You can now, new support for compound shape collisions allows for complex simulations not possible before. Uh, you can now combine multiple primitive shapes into a concave shape, resulting in blazing fast simulations. More details available there. Uh, organizer got some improvements here, including, I don't know if this is an improvement to be honest, but colors. Uh, you now have the ability to pick colors over here. Uh, outliner modifiers, drag and drop now works for modifiers, constraints, and grease pencil effects. Um, in animations, we've got snappier F curves. So you can see here before and after allows you to do much sharper transitions using curves. Um, F curve, uh, uh, all key keyframe types can now be inserted without changing the F curve shape. Uh, override all the library override system really shines in Blender 2.91 on the left library dot blend file on the right linked model with transform overrides applied. 
Uh, by by proxy, proxy objects can be converted into overrides with just one click. And then a whole lot more going on in here. We're not going to get into the weeds of it. Once again, I will have all of that linked down below. So if you want to get into uh, the full details of what are in this release, you can get them there. Again, all of the relevant links will be available in the linked article down below. And do give it some time, some patience. Generally, uh, the download is not an incredibly fun thing on release day. So let's go ahead and see how this works. And yeah, let, let's just assume that it's going to get back to me eventually. So give them some patience. Their servers are probably on fire. But Blender 2.91 is here. Let me know what you think. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye and happy blending.